What's up Edmonton, it's Ryan here today with Howard Power Electrical and we want to talk to you today about aluminum wiring. Uh, we're going to go over why it's bad, what's, what's so bad about it, how you can rectify it and uh, you know what, what solutions we can do to there. Uh, how long that rectification, uh, aluminum adaptation, whatever you want to call it, how long that's going to take, uh, what you can do for your electrical contractor first to make it go nice and smooth and uh, little things to watch out for there. So this isn't a video showing you how to do it. This is a video showing you to uh, what you want to watch out for with this aluminum wiring and uh, how to get it done. So we'll, we'll dive right in here. Uh, first, why is aluminum wiring bad? If you're watching this, you probably just bought an old house or you're uh, looking to buy an older house and it came up on your home inspection report that you have aluminum wiring. So don't be too scared. There is some solutions. But uh, why it's bad is traditional aluminum wiring before the 80s typically, uh, it oxidizes. It's pure aluminum. And when aluminum oxidizes by uh, aluminum's nature chemically, it forms a resistive film, a resistive compound around that wire. So oxidization occurs with just about any metal, um, but when you have that with copper, it turns green like a penny, but it's still conductive. With aluminum, it's not conductive. Uh, that resistive film um, itself is resistive, and resistance makes heat, and heat makes fire, and that's why a lot of your insurance companies aren't going to want to insure you if you have aluminum wiring in your house. Um, so the problem again isn't the aluminum wiring itself in the walls. It will be a little bit brittle and that's probably its weakest point but uh, at the devices at the point of terminations that's where you're probably going to want to see um, see about rectifying it having an aluminum aluminum adaptation. But uh, for aluminum adaptations uh, the three top three ways you can really do it uh, the most common one is what we'll start with there. Uh, that's an aluminum adaptation and we're going to use aluminum rated morettes uh, with copper pigtails to a brand new device. So we'll take out those old devices, those go in the trash now, and then we uh, strip off your aluminum very carefully because it's extremely brittle and if you move it too much or fold it or bend it and rebend it, it's probably going to break on you. So uh, we know what to look for with that. I mean this is something that we do once a week as a, as a company, but uh, once, a, once a week at the very least. But if uh, if you're doing a DIY kind of stuff, yeah, it's not rocket science. I'm sure you could figure it out, but you're going to have some stress uh, if you try to dive into this yourself. That's why we advise you to hire a professional electrical contractor. Uh, here in Edmonton, we are the highest rated electrical contractor by Google, and uh, we would love to work with you, give you a fair price, and get that done for you. But uh, anyways, again, back to the, uh, the whole point of this video here, just to educate and bring some knowledge out there. Um, aluminum rated morettes with copper pigtails and you're going to use Nolox or Penetrox, some sort of anti-oxidization compound. Um, aluminum, Nolox, no aluminum oxidization. Um, that's the most common one that we're going to use for that. Brand new aluminum wiring, kind of from the 80s onwards. Uh, aluminum wiring has changed in the sense that now they use a aluminum mixed with other metals so that it doesn't have the reaction, that galvanic action, that corrosion that uh, typical aluminum wiring has from before the 80s. So they've improved a little bit on it. Uh, there's a big debate whether you use Nolox or not use Nolox, but that's where that comes. But if you're using old aluminum wiring, use the Nolox and use aluminum rated morettes. They look just like regular morettes. However, uh, their, their spring uh, from the manufacturer is more springy. Uh, so it can, it can deal with that, um, those dissimilar metals expanding and contracting at different rates. It can handle that rather than a typical morette that might break on you or uh, might just not hold a true connection. So that's your very first most common approach. We got pricing for that. Give us a call and we can do that for you. Uh, the other two common approaches that you're going to see for that would be uh, aluminum rated devices. So devices themselves that are a little bit more expensive but they're rated for either aluminum or copper. And the third way that you're going to see is uh, it's the most expensive way but uh, it's not a band-aid fix, it's going the full measure, it's doing it 100% right, and it's gutting that house and ripping out all that aluminum wiring, and then you're gonna have to uh, rewire the whole house and re-drywall the whole house. So, um, good solution, it's a kind of a dynamite solution, but uh, it will solve your aluminum wiring problem in your old, um, probably 40s, 50s, or 60s built home. 
Uh, typically just the upstairs is going to have your aluminum wire and your basement probably won't have it. That was probably finished after the fact, but uh, that's typically what we see. So those are the three ways that you can rectify uh, and solve your aluminum wiring issue. But uh, again, it's going to probably take, um, it's probably going to take you two, two days, depending on the size of your home, one to three days. Uh, if it's a little town home, it might take a day, but uh, otherwise it'd be a little bit bigger of a job and uh, the material those aluminum rated marats they're uh, probably one of the bigger costs there aside from the electrician's labor but uh, that's what you're looking for as far as a, a length of time if you're wondering how long you're going to have to have electricians uh, taking up space in your home and uh, that's that's it there and then the other side of things too is uh, if you've already moved into this home uh, you're going to have furniture everywhere we would ask and any electrical contractor would really appreciate it if you just had your furniture moved out away from the wall for about two feet give us a guy give a guy some room to work there because he's going to have to get into that box and get that wire out and and strip it put on the no locks and we don't want to make a, a mess of your home and uh, we want to be able to do the work nice and clean um, the other thing you're going to want to watch for is whoever you're hiring an electrical contractor typically they'll have a master electrician on staff we have two on staff but your insurance company is probably going to want to see a letter stating that the aluminum adaptation has been performed and that it has been signed off by a master electrician typically they'll want to see that in order to um, increase insurance uh, for your home to, to keep insuring your home that's what we see a lot of the time for our clients there so make sure that they're going to give you a letter and if they are going to charge extra for the letter make sure they're upfront about that a lot of electrical contractors might not always be upfront about that. They'll uh, happily do your aluminum adaptation, and then when you ask for a letter, they'll probably want a couple hundred bucks for that letter too. So uh, just to manage expectations, always ask those questions first. And then uh, when they're wiring it, a good question to ask your electrician or your electrical contractor is, are you going to be uh, putting the wires around the screws or in the back of the device? Oftentimes a cheaper electrical contractor will backstab the outlet and the problem with that is that those connections are uh, we, we get tons of service calls every week for fixing those connections it's a spring type connection that holds the wire in the back of the receptacle and if you have any sort of vibration wear or tear or heat or high current flow um, that little spring is going to loosen up over time and that wire can pop out and uh, create bigger issues. The proper way to do it is clockwise around the screw. Then it will never come off and it will never loosen up. And you'll have plugs from the 60s and uh, they'll still be holding true and holding strong. So watch out for that as well, that crumbling wire. Um, sometimes that wire can crumble up into the box and they might have to pull more wire out. So if a guy says he's gonna have to do drywall damage, typically that's what they're referring to. Uh, we have few solutions to avoid that, however, uh, if you're, if you're tackling it yourself, you might find out that the wire is going to crumble back and crumble back, and then you'll have to open up the wall and, and do, a, do a splice further up. So yeah, save yourself the stress. Hire a professional electrical contractor. Uh, give us a call here at Howard Power Electrical, 780-935-0622. You can visit our website at howardpower.ca. Shoot us an email, info at howardpower.ca. And uh, if you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe. But uh, more importantly, if you have any other electrical concerns that you'd like us to make a video about, let us know. Shoot us in the comments below there, and be sure to follow us on all our socials, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Have a great day, Edmonton, and we hope to uh, work with you soon and, and give you power. Our whole mission is power and customer service, and this video and all the other videos are just one more way that we like to uh, reach out and try to educate as best we can. Have a great day, guys. Take care. Until the next time.